In the module we're going to work on for plumbing, um, one of the biggest goals is really to help you understand what you're going to see and what you're going to be designing uh, visually and its connection to how things actually function. So we make up a small bathroom, which you probably already completed, our ADA bathroom. Now we're going to look at how the water is collected, how it is vented, how water is supplied to things, what that plumbing looks like, and kind of a model reality so that when you're on site, when you're laying things out, you'll have a better understanding of what's behind all of this. So one of the first things about this idea of recognizing plumbing, uh, this idea of supply lines. Supply lines are the ones that bring us the hot and cold water. Um, and typically in relatively good construction, you'll see copper lines supplying all of this. There are plastic, um, very seldom seen anymore. Um, kind of like a flesh tone colored plastic. Uh, but this is a uh, two supply lines. This is a drain coming off of a sink. These are the two stub, what's called stub outs for um, the, the shutoff valves that will supply the sink. And these continue on up because what this is doing is this is a airspace that gets created to reduce a thing called water hammer. And that's when you turn the water off on a fixture very quickly. Sometimes there's a knocking in the plumbing. And that comes from the fact that the fluid is moving through and it ra it has to stop rapidly. And that causes a jarring in the plumbing, creates a distracting kind of noise. So these are for, uh, uh, these extensions are just create a, a, a pocket of air um, to kind of buffer that. So this is what a copper, this is what the supply line in the wall would look like for a, a lavatory in a bathroom, so to speak. Here we have what could be, um, this is actually also a bathroom. And um, this time it's done in PEX tubing. So the tubing is uh, typically red for hot and blue for cold, but it's just a color coating. Um, here we have, uh, once again, this is the same over here. That's the supply lines for the sink. This is the supply line for the toilet. And these are two continuing off to supply the shower and or tub that would be built. And we're not seeing any drain lines here, mostly because they may be cropped out or they just may have not been installed yet. So um, you should be able to, after a while, be able to identify this kind of look of two pipes coming up to supply the fixture. This is a mounting bracket either for um, supporting the, the uh, fixtures between the studs. Um, there may be some blocking in here to support a sink that would go in. Um, but all of this should become, you know, if you study this a little bit, it will become relatively apparent when you're on a job site what um, the rough end for a bathroom plumbing looks like. And um, this is probably one of the more confusing things that you might be faced with, the, uh, the complexities of an underfloor drain system. Um, this case we can see over here, I'm identifying a flange. This is a toilet flange, so there'll probably be a toilet placed over here. Um, no telling what's going to happen over here. These are stubbed up, um, probably for other drain fixtures. This is the start of a trap. So here's the part of the trap that hasn't been connected here, and this will probably be drain um, a shower or um, you know a walk-in a walk-in shower or something like that. Um, but many times uh, there's uh, a lot going on. In, in this case, this is actually not even a plumbing pipe here. It looks the same. But this is supplying, this could be uh, bringing supply lines in inside of a conduit that's also white. So this is PVC plumbing, very common today. There are job sites that you would see where you'll still see cast iron use. There are typically no real advantages to cast iron. It has stayed popular uh, for the most part because of its, um, because of union issues and pipe fitters. Um, it is sometimes recommended to be used um, for applications of noise or sound reduction, but the negatives of it almost outweigh any of the benefits, and that would be that it's, it's easily corroded and um, it doesn't have the, um, uh, I guess, the service lives that um, PVC would have. So um, we have two types of sanitary lines, um, and this we're going to get into this concept of venting um, and uh, the, the management of water. So we have soil lines. Soil lines are considered the toilet, urinal waste, black water. And waste lines are considered things that are gray water, things that are, are soiled. They're not drinking water. 
but they're not um, necessarily contaminated with um, what we would refer to as pathogens that come out of out of human wastewater. Um, so um, discharge from sinks and washing machines and sh showers. So a lot of times we consider those gray waters to have a value for being used as irrigation or recycling back into other types of uses on the site. So um, with all of that, we, we have this idea of venting. Venting is, is um, uh, the idea of allowing air to properly move through the system in ways that don't allow noxious gases from entering um, our home. So if you just take a general thought about it, here is a pipe coming up through the floor that drains out to a sewer drain. And if there was nothing blocking this whole flow, any gases in the sewer would easily enter the room. So, you know, a millennium ago, um, the concept of a trap was invented. The idea that, and I'll, I have some better graphics of this coming up, but um, the idea is the trap seals that air opening. And um, there's a, um, the nuance to these two graphics here are, this is a trap also, but it's drained of its water. And it's drained of that water because it was sucked out because there was no vent on the top of, this, of the plumbing here. So it just, um, so the column of water actually extracted all of the water from the trap and caused it to fail. So with correct venting systems, the idea is that you break that gap by venting, continuing your vent up through the wall system and out through the top of the building. And here's an illustration of that reason for that venting going out through the top. So here we have our connection out to the sewer system, and then every device is protected with a trap. So sewer gases, the toilet has a trap in it by the nature of the water that sits in the bowl. So none of the sewer gases can then enter the building. And any sewer gases that are coming are vented completely all the way up off the roof of the building. So any plumbing system will have a pipe that extends up through the roof of the building. And one of the considerations for architects when you're designing sanitary systems like this or planning them is that when all your plumbing is located in a consolidated core, so to speak, you only have one penetration through the roof. As these become more and more distributed, you have more and more vents coming through the roof. And there are potentials for leaks. There are additional costs every time you break through the roof. So many times we try to reduce plumbing costs by reducing the amount of vent systems that need to be placed into our plumbing systems. And then you can see each one of these, these the, this toilet is venting directly up, uh, but these devices need to have vents nearby them. So these extra pieces of pipe are not carrying water. They're, they're um, allowing vent air to enter uh, the drain system to keep from siphoning the water out of the trap. And just a couple of close-ups. So here we have the idea of the trap, the vent pipe, the movement of air through the fixture. And this is a little close-up of this idea of the trap sealing off that ability for the air to get in. And I wanted to couple that with a cross-section of a toilet to show you that that idea of trapping or sealing up the opening with water happens in a toilet bowl also. We'll pick up on another section. We'll talk about some of the other details of plumbing systems next.